Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to talk about a new type of characters that was introduced in the game recently which is Astro Knight. Now, uh, Astro Knight is a whole different type of characters, in fact they have a slightly different game mechanic to your other characters. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to spend the first half talking about exactly what are Astro Knights. There's certain quirks that you have to be wary of. And then in the second half I'll actually be talking about the character that was released. So here we go. The gold sickness version of Hugo. Alright, first thing I want to clarify up front is right now the only option of buying him is through money. However, that's only gonna be for the first 21 days. So uh, if you do if you really can't wait, I guess you can spend some money, but I definitely definitely do not recommend that because you can't actually get him for free. But what that is gonna mean is that you will be needing some other in-game currencies and there's a cap on each of the in-game currencies that you're able to redeem the fragments for but essentially you are able to redeem a certain number of fragments for each of these different currencies and in total if you meant to get 60 fragments then you are able to get this knight absolutely for free um, now this option is not going to be available uh, for another 21 days which is right now why this button is grayed out however you know I don't see why you absolutely need to have this character for the first 21 days anyway and that's why I suggest do not purchase him with actual real money just simply wait and build up all of your currency in the meantime now because there's a cap on how many fragments you can exchange with each of this currency um, unfortunately you will be needing all four so please do start saving up now the main one I think is going to be a struggle and also happens to be the one you need the most is going to be this badge of Fowler which you can only get by clearing 12 palaces and because 12 palaces only open four times a week um, basically you have to make sure that you save up a good amount of badge of Fowler in order to actually be able to get so many copies of him so please do start saving up now, it's going to be very important. Alright, now, so that's basically how you can get Astronauts. Now, um, in terms of how Astronaut works, there's already a bit of description in game, but basically what you can see here is that normally you get a single copy, which is a 5 star, which is what's here on the screen right now. However, you're able to link him, make a connection with another character that you have. And once that happens, he is going to be able to copy off that character's star ranks and levels, etc. Now, this is only copying star rank and level. So, for example, um, if my Sagittarius here is 16 star, then my Hugo is going to go immediately from 5 star to 16 star. However, it's not going to copy that character's close war constellation. Um, so, actually, I think for close, it only copy the first 20 levels or something. But you still need Blood of God to actually max him out. Uh, but Constellation it doesn't copy at all and that's going to be very annoying because I will actually talk later on why his Constellation is really good. But basically just bear that in mind, so even though you don't need any duplicates to rank up his star levels, you still need resources for his close and Constellation, so be wary of that before you make anything. And also the other thing to note is that when you make a connection with this character, what that means is the two characters cannot be on the team at the same time. So you cannot select both of those characters. So now it gets a bit tricky about which character you link it up to, because ideally you want to link it up to a character which is both high level, but also at the same time uh, have really bad synergy with Hugo so that you will never place both of them at the same time. Now, uh, I'll talk later on about Hugo's skill kit, but you know, um, I, I'll just give you the tip now. Hugo basically plays in a control formation where you try to delay the battle for as long as possible. So basically, it's unlikely for you to place Hugo in any kind of burst damage uh, teams, such as, let's say, Sagittarius Sayer. And that's why Sagittarius Sayer could be a very good character for you to link up Hugo with, because Hugo, I will only place him when I want to delay the battle for a long control kind of tactic, whereas Sagittarius Sayer, I'm trying to go for burst damage at the start of battle. So there's no way I'll have both of them in the same team at once, because their win conditions are totally contradicting each other, and therefore that would be a good connection for me to make. Um, but yeah, essentially that's what you want to bear in mind. You want to make Hugo or any kind of astronaut link up to another knight that you know for sure you will never be able to be able to play in the same team at the same time. 
All right. Um, the next thing I think you have to be wary of of astronauts is that their equipment. Now, if I look into your character, what you see here is that on the top, you normally see what type of knights there are. So this one is an air knight and also a skill knight. Now, if you have a really keen eagle eye, you probably already see the difference right now. But basically, what happens? Astronauts, their icons are represented by a hexagon. Whereas for all of your other knights, the icons are actually a circle. And you may wonder why that's the case. It's not just to indicate astronauts as a different type of knight, but actually it's also going to tell you the equipment that you need for him is going to be different. Uh, now, right now you can only get his equipment in uh, with real money, which is a bit annoying, but maybe I think in the future you'll be able to get it elsewhere as well. But right now what you see is that I have uh in the mall right now i have red astral trinket and all of this equipment would have a hexagon on the top right and basically that you know and also the name tell you you are only able to equip this in on your astronauts now if i compare this to a different type of um, equipment do i have any equipment here that i can show or oh, maybe in gross packs, I think I have. Yeah, so for example here, what you can see here is for all of the other characters, uh, their equipment will be shown by a circle icon. Whereas for astral characters, their equipment, they have their own exclusive equipment, which is shown with a hexagon. So I don't actually know how it works with Omega, but I think if they make all those efforts to make the base kit equipment to be exclusive to astral characters, I do think it's very likely that um, you they will have their own exclusive Omega versions as well. Now, what this means is that in order to actually take advantage of any set benefits, I think you can still equip the equipment to Astro Knights, but they just won't benefit from the set bonuses. So, for example, when you have four Omega 2 equipments at once, you get extra additional bonuses. I just think Astro Knights wouldn't be able to take advantage of that. So once again, this is a quirk that you have to bear in mind, is that if you do want to use an astronaut, you potentially need to go and look for a whole new set of equipment for him. Or if you don't want to spend that money to get equipment, then you probably have to settle for a slightly worse version of the equipment because you won't be able to take advantage of their set bonuses and set buffs, etc. So something else to bear in mind for astronauts. All right, uh, now let's move on to the character himself, I guess. Um, I'm going to quickly talk through his skills, close up constellation, and also why uh, he is actually a really good character for certain situations. Now, um, his ultimate is pretty average, well, pre pretty self-explanatory. Basically, you freeze an enemy. Um, freeze three enemies, in fact, so pretty straightforward. His looping skill also straightforward, knock up one back enemy, so therefore compulsory interruption. Uh, his passive, make him immune to freeze and slow down and also reduce the time of interruptions and control. So quite nice, but it's only for himself, so... Uh, oh, actually, it doesn't say it's just for him. But passive is normally just for himself. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is just for himself. So once again, I think it's a quite mediocre skill. So all the three skills I mentioned right now are pretty average. His only good skills, I guess, to some extent, is going to be his trigger skill. And what that basically says is when any enemy is on the freeze, he is going to recharge Cosmo immediately. But also other allies at the back are also going to recharge Cosmo. And this is going to be really nice when you have a kind of like a freeze formation. And that's pretty much the only situation you would be playing Hugo in anyway, is that when you are in a freeze synergy kind of formation alongside with a Crest Camus and also a Crest Hugo. Kraken Isaac doesn't matter too much. It's a, it's a nice to have, but it's not compulsory. But a Crest Hugo and a Crest Camus are definitely the must have. Alongside with this version of Hugo, I think those three are kind of the core uh, components of any kind of ice team. And basically, what this allows you to do, this trigger skill allows you to do, is allow you to continuously 
uh, quickly charge up your Cosmo. And once you charge up your Cosmo, let's take Camus as an example. His ultimate is able to freeze enemy, and because his ultimate is able to freeze enemy, you are gonna charge up the Cosmo again. And basically, this can help you to charge up your Cosmo so much faster than your opponent, and basically make the game like very one-sided, where you just keep on freezing the opponents, and the opponents can hardly move in uh, in the between, etc. So basically, just go into this ex internal loop of freezing enemies, and that's why it's really important. So this is a very interesting trigger skill and that's why he is almost like a must-have in any kind of like proper ice team now his close is okay but basically what it does is kind of around this whole idea of extreme icy aura uh, what happens is that when it's stacked to a max you are able to freeze the targets so this is good synergy with his trigger skill because once again when they're frozen you'll be able to charge up your cosmos etc so you know it's quite nice close um, but his main strengths and the main uh, reason why you need to get this character is actually for his constellation. Now, uh, as a minimum, you need 3 out of 9. But ideally, if you can get 9 out of 9, that'd be great as well. But basically, what this does is when an ally gets fatal damage, you are able to prevent that fatal damage and actually heal HP. And that's going to be really nice. So at 3 out of 9, you can only do that for once in the whole battle. And 9 out of 9, you are able to do that for every single ally in the battle. So that's going to be really important. And the reason why it's really important is because... Uh, obviously, if you have an ice team, then this basically helps you to survive for a lot longer. So that's best self-explanatory. But the main place this is going to be really important is actually going to be in the maze, when you can only field five wind characters what happens is as you progress later down in the maze there you are going to face up all kind of enemies and one type of enemy which is going to be really annoying for you to deal with is going to be sagittarius Saiyan. because what sagittarius say is going to do is going to launch a massive high damage dealing attack to all of your characters at the start of the battle so unless you have a way to prevent that attack, a lot of time it's going to go one shot most of your fragile knights. And to be honest, a lot of wind characters are pretty fragile. So um, also wind characters, elemental disadvantage against fire as well. So Sagittarius Sayer in the ice maid, uh, in the wind maze is absolutely deadly. There's currently no way on how you can get past a really strong Sagittarius Sayer in the wind maze unless you are so much higher level than them. Now, this is also a problem in other mazes, but it's less of an issue because there's already some kind of way of you being able to counter them. So for a fire, for example, you can bring Krishna, uh, who is gonna you know, put up a shell to protect everyone. For water, you can use Moses. With full constellation, you're also able to reduce the damage for the first few seconds, so similar kind of effect. For Earth, you have Casa. Casa is able to kind of prevent fatal damages, etc. Uh, so once again, very nice. Uh, and not just against Sagittarius A, also against any kind of like high damage dealing opening attack, like Potomi as well. Uh, but for Wind, currently, there's no character who is able to do that. So basically, if you face up with a Padomi, will face up with a Sagittarius Sayer, be prepared, one of your characters is going to be dead straight off. So, and the whole battle is going to be like four or three versus five. So, that's going to be really annoying. But what uh, Gold Sickness Hugo is able to do is essentially similar to Telepathy offered by Casa. He's going to prevent a fatal damage, and that is going to be the game changer for you. Because now you no longer have to worry about Sagittarius Sayers opening a hand, knocking you, knocking, you know, one or two of your character out completely from the start of the battle. Now you actually have a way to avoid the fatal damage and therefore actually go into the battle five versus five. And that's going to be super important. Like I said, as far as I'm aware, this is going to be the only way you will be able to counter Sagittarius Sayer in wind uh, in wind mazes. If you do not have this character, you can only overcome him with raw power. And um, right now, at high resonance, it normally takes me about two or three days just to level up by one level. So, in order to overcome it with raw power, we are talking about at least a time difference of you know two three months here. So that's why Ghost uh, Sickness. Um, Hugo, absolutely a must have purely just for mazes. Now, if you say I'm gonna ignore mazes altogether, then fine. 
But just be aware, you will be missing out a lot of resources. They give you a lot of magic stone. They also give you a lot of your um, uh, divination star hill. Uh, stones that kind of thing. I forgot what it's called now. Um, but yeah, so it gives you a huge amount of resources in all of those major of illusions. So this character is initially going to help you to progress all those stages at least three months earlier. So definitely a must have from that perspective.